Ladies and gentlemen, I believe, I believe, I believe we are live. Right? Right, Shane? Yeah, I think we're live, man. Yeah, I think we're live. All right, there we go. All right, boom, there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to First Strike, hosted by myself and the legendary final boss, Shane Wall. Oh, I get the legendary stuff. Legendary today. I'll take it. It's a special episode, folks. We have, a, we have a guest this week. We have a guest this week. He needs no introduction. Actually, no, he does need an introduction, and we have one for him. Uh, we have Captain Retro on the show. Here's his, here's his opening, and uh, yeah, get ready for a fun episode, guys. When you want to go, when you want to go, what's going down, you can down. Captain, Captain Retro, it's Captain Retro Show. Captain, Captain Retro, it's Captain Retro Show. Boom, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the man of the hour, Captain Retro. What's up, everybody? Bam, there he is, our first official guest star. Do you feel special? You know, I feel, when I right when the stream kicked in and my screen came up, I'm, yeah, honest to God, I felt there was like lasers go off and like fireworks, and I, I thought I was like coming in for a WWE match or something. It's very the 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 it's palpable. The you know, tension. We, we were gonna have that, but it wasn't in the budget. It right? Just wasn't we have about four fifty a week, four dollars fifty cents Canadian, which I spend at Tim Hortons every day. So it just doesn't. It just can't be a thing. Sorry, man. Is that Tim Hortons you got right there in a can? Yeah, why not? Tim's in a can. Is that what that is? Tim's in a can is what, is what we're down to right now. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we got Captain Retro on the show today. We got a fun episode. We're going to be discussing what we think Nintendo's best console is a little later on. We got some shop stories, apparently, that Shane wants to share. And and more, of course. Uh, but first things first, we got MC Murr in the chat, one of uh, one of Kevin's Kevin's friends. Kai Duke is here. We got Cool Robert Payne. Yeah. Uh, we got Classic Gaming, David Atwood is here, good to see you sir, Damian Penner of course, who really wants me to stream The Lion King for the Super Nintendo, that's why I bought it today by the way. It's a tough game. That's what I hear. It's it's not an easy game. It is not an easy game, you but it's it. a fun, it's a good one. But have you beat it? That's the real question. I beat it on the Genesis, I don't know about Super Nintendo version. Okay. Definitely, definitely Genesis beating it. Well speaking of beating games, speaking of what what are we all playing this week? Let's open up with Kevin, what are you playing this week? Man, the last uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been on like a steady rotation of Assassin's Creed Origins, um, okay. Fortnite. I lo I'm loving some Fortnite right now. I've been playing that with my buddy Josh a lot. Um, I've just picked up L.A. Noir on the PS4 to play through that again. Nice. Um, and pinball. I you know once a day, a some, there, guy, there's huh? some kind of pinball happening in my life once a day at least. So, what's your favorite? Uh, and that's a good question. Your favorite your favorite version of pinball because there's about 42 million out there. I mean, I like, I prefer a real pinball machine over, oh, you know, yeah. video yeah. pinball, yeah. but there is some great pinball stuff. Everything on the PS4 pinball wise is spectacularly well done video pinball. We well, you know what they say. Pinball is the new Call of Duty. That's what they is say. That, that's is what that what they say. they say? That's what they say. Well, yeah. shit. So you're rocking 120 frames per second on this new pinball stuff. <laughs> Call of Duty has 60. I mean, that's all you need to say. Double the that, frame rate, double the fun. I, that's what they always say. It that's is. like. Twice the mega power, right? That was an old Sega thing. Mega, it's mega, <clears throat> mega yeah, frame rate. Blast processing, man, for sure. What are you playing, Shane? I I took a break on the Fortnite. That like that's just that's ruled my life this last few weeks, and I just can't. I couldn't shake it. I finally was able to shake it, and I'm playing Legend of the Dragoon for the first time. There you go, PS One. And PS One. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. How yeah, far are you in now? How far are you in now? I'm on disc two. So I want no spoilers. I haven't. I, I don't know the game well. Uh, big fan of turn-based RPGs and the whole bit, but I have not. I just never got around to playing the game. I I chose unfortunately the N64 side of things when it came to the PS1. The older I get, the more I realize, man, I was just a dumb kid. Hey, man, the N64 that. was a fun console. It was not not the proper console. But it was a fun console. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> For kids, it was a good console. Yeah, it was fine. All right, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, truth be told, as per usual, nothing else is new. I've, I've literally touched nothing this week. Nothing at all. Not one thing. Not true. Ah, <laughs> no, not true. I did put in a hat in time for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, the, that Steam, the new platformer. I forget the, oh, who made it? I don't know. Uh, I did play it a little bit. I played through the first level. The, the controls in that game are tight. That's, oh. that's all I can really say about it so far. They, it just, it handles well. What, what game? I'm sorry? A hat, a hat in time. 
a hat in time. I don't know that one. Is that Switch? What's on that? What's yeah. that on? It should be on the Switch, but it's not. It's for PS4, PC. It might be on Xbox One. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard about an Xbox One release yet, sure. so I don't know if it's on there. For sure, it's on Steam and, P- and PC. It's it's a 3D platformer. Um, it was made. It was a Kickstarter thing, kind of like Ukulele. Uh, it was made by a bunch of guys who promised to deliver on a, a platformer that was like the PS2 GameCube era of, of 3D platformers. Um, and it has rave, like it has very good reviews. It's There was a lot of hype for Ukulele when that came out, but this game is apparently much better. That's what I've heard too, and I, I've been tempted to buy it because it just released on PS4 a couple weeks ago, or maybe two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I've been tempted to play it, but I don't know, man. There's so many games I want to play and, and get to, I just can't really do it. Yeah, it's a toy gun. It's a toy gun, guys. It's everybody's asking in the comments if that's a real gun behind me. <laughs> I think it's, it's a real a gun. It, that one's a toy. I do have a real gun. It's it's not in here right now. Yeah, see, Actually, here in Canada we have hockey sticks. So yeah, lots of them. Right. We get more reach with that. <laughs> How much reach do you have with your gun? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot of range, especially with my fake gun. Especially with this toy gun. It's about as far as I can throw it. Maybe thirty feet. All right, but it makes noises. Well, we'll let the kids play while we while we talk. Um, shop trades. Shop trades. What do you got going on? Yeah, trade wise, it wasn't a very busy week uh, for for the new people here. We have a game shop. That's where this whole thing is kind of bloomed out of. I run the game shop. I'm here all the time, and we yeah we deal with the retro games, with the new games, a little bit of everything. And yeah, with Christmas coming up, the last couple of weeks has been crazy. There's been so many people in here. I feel like I need to drop ten thousand dollars of just stock in here because it feels so darn empty, which kind of sucks because I'm just seeing all this awesome stuff leave. Right. Which it kills me every time. It, like if I sell PS3 360 games, I don't care at all. Get that out of here. Like just it'll take, come back anyway. Just I take it. it. I don't need it. I really don't care. But when somebody's buying some NES games or Super Nintendo games, stuff like that. That always kills me a little bit. Even though, yeah, I'm making money, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I don't know, like I'd probably buy that back. Sure, it's <laughs> so, nice to see people buy weird, it though. Yeah, yeah. So as a good example, we had this this 12 or 13 year old kid come in last week, Friday, Saturday, something like that, and uh, and he wanted a Game Boy, oh. an original Game Boy. So he actually wanted an original. And Game he Boy. bought like the red one, the Play It Loud series. It's red gone. Game Boy. Yeah, he bought that. Oh no way! And it, I just love that he comes in with his mom, and his mom his mom pays for it, and he, he has his Game Boy game now. Like I I went through one of the bins and I found like that little light thing that you plug into the side that actually gives you a little bit of light and stuff. And it's just so cool that somebody like that buys a Game Boy. It just made my day. It was awesome. That is insane, uh, man. I was I was I've been thinking about buying that thing for a long time. I like the red. It's a nice vibrant game the boy. only thing missing was that battery cover that's that why sucked. i hadn't bought it that was the whole yeah that part really sucked it's amazing how many people lose those things like i still can't yeah. believe how many yeah nine out of ten game boys i get don't have the the battery back you're a collector kevin like how many weird. how many game boys have you found in your time that just don't have a battery cover oh um, man uh six out of ten don't have one 60 percent or so don't have a the back on them and if they do it's chewed up and it's been like in a dog's mouth for a minute or two you know what i mean like it's like one of those well biter lady got them yeah or yeah a kid that wants to chew on things so they chew on the corner or it's it, they pull, pull it off and the back part don't really stick on anymore because it's been chewed on yeah a little clip breaks and whatever yeah all right just real quick you got woodbury and an ak-47 welcome to the stream guys uh it's good to see you 17 people watching hello to everyone watching all of captain retros guys thank you for coming out we appreciate you stopping by absolutely Something and stick around, sub to their channel. These guys know what they're talking about. Well, they they obviously they run a game shop up in Canadian land. They're pretty cool. Check them out. <laughs> We're getting plugged in our own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I think hey he's man, taking I'm over. Hey man, I'm a plug machine. I'm plug. I, I plug. I just plug. <laughs> All I'm right. Plugged right now. Somebody's <laughs> plugging me on the phone. <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Uh, game Boy. Yeah, yeah, we're talking one... about like kids, a little kid buying a, a Game Boy, which is awesome. There was. When I, I go to a lot of conventions and stuff, and I, you know, sell things, and I was at Retro Palooza in Dallas back in October, November, whenever the last one was, and uh, I'm trying to find the kid's name, but there's this kid, and he was on. Do y'all watch Eight Bit Brody? Are y'all aware of who that is? I've stopped by his channel. I'm not a avid watcher though. Okay, he does. He's kind of. He calls himself the used car salesman of retro gaming. Yeah. yeah. His show's kind of wacky. He does like weird interviews. He does you know comedy stuff. 
Um, but he got this kid a, a couple years, I guess a year before at Retro Blue. He started he started him off with a copy of Double Dribble, and the kid ended up trading all the way to Turbo Graphics 16 and a couple other things. Like he made trades all the way through the convention with this little kid. And I'm looking for the kid's name, but he plays this little kid is like 12, 13 years old. He is the future of retro gaming. Like he, I'm looking for his name. It's going to take me forever to find it, but damn it. It's really nice to see like super young people. It's cool. With have it's really cool to see. Yeah. Kids that don't, that had no idea what it was to play it and, and want to collect it. I, I, that's neat for me to see too. I don't have kids of my own. So it's, I would hope if I did, they'd want to play the old stuff too. That's what your kids will be doing. Yeah, at least one of them. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I have two, I have two kids of my own, four and almost one and a half. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, they're still kind of young. I think I got my NES when I was around four. Yeah. And I, I swear I was beating Mario Bros when I was four. But now to look at my daughter and expect her to not beat this game, that, that just uh, I just don't see it. It's weird to think about, but for sure. But my son, yeah, he will. He will be beating Mario Bros. at four. I have this conflicted feeling about when I have kids. I'm like, do I give you an NES when you're yes. young and then slowly yes. go from there? <laughs> like, like, that's what I want to do. But, like, what about when he goes to his friend's house and he has the PS12 and then he comes home to his Super Nintendo and then bitches at me because I, he only has his... What? Yeah, there's no voice chat. Yeah, where's the voice? Where's the graphics? Where's the guns? Like... Well, honestly, honestly, the Switch and the Super Nintendo have about the same voice chat capabilities. <laughs> so. The Switch doesn't have voice. That's why you use your phone. You have yeah, to, that's it's ex- garbage. We don't yeah, even I talk still about can't that. believe that. That's a whole separate issue. We got Tall Tale Gamer Bros. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Dr. Pete, welcome here as well. How you doing, yes. Mr. Pest? Sorry, I'm blind. And Elodia, welcome as well. It's good to see you. We're glad you made it. Man, okay, fantastic. I was going to touch on something, and then I got distracted by this Game Boy thing. Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, see, I can go on and on with the stories we have in this shop. This, like, man, our town sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, it's just there's <laughs> so many deadbeats in this town, and I see the worst of the worst here, and it just... Like, I would have never... We were talking about this yesterday, because we were here at, like, 1 a.m. Yeah. chatting. Uh, I have never known how many weirdos there are where we live up until you opened this game yeah, shop. Yeah, I had no idea either. Because there is a stunning amount of whack jobs. Oh, and it, it doesn't stop. Like, there's just so many, and there's new ones, and then they go away for a while. Like, we had a guy claiming he hung out with, with Jesus and hung out with Satan. But honestly, and Satan, honestly was, Satan was more fun. He was more fun, yeah. And <laughs> it just, man, it doesn't stop. There's just endless stories of just the weird people we get here. And I, I, sometimes I just want to punch myself in the face and just wake up and see what happens after that. I, I, I don't know what to do sometimes. It's the price to pay to have one of the coolest fucking jobs in the world <laughs> so that's just how it is to be honest with you yeah, i found it comprehend games that's his channel comprehend games it's and this just is like, the young kid you were talking this about is the kid dude he he doesn't have a lot of he's got like 127 subs but he collects old school cartridge stuff his his oh. walls are starting to look like mine and it's awesome how young yeah, are we talking here like, he might be 13. I don't know. He, he bought a bunch of stuff at the convention, and his dad was with him, and like they hang, they were hanging out the whole time, the whole weekend at the at Retro Palooza. Good for that uh, guy. Maybe maybe 12, 13. I don't know, but he knows his way around some old school video games. And That's amazing. Anyway, he makes a channel about it, and I don't necessarily watch what you know. He's a kid, but I, I highly, I highly respect the uh, the love of retro that, that the younger generation it seems to have. So yeah, exactly. I just subscribed to him now, actually. Oh, look at you go! Yeah, Helping give us the a, community. Why not? <laughs> are you we really? too harsh on Sonic Forces? No, I don't, I don't think we are. I think that deserves all the harshness it gets. Well, you haven't played it yourself. You're just going off popular yeah, opinion. It doesn't look very good. But you got to play it. No, got to play it. No, to give a fair review. I mean, it's probably better than Mario Sunshine, but actually, just before we before we dive into some deeper topics here, uh, Kevin, have you ever played Super Paper Mario for the Wii? <laughs> for the Wii, I, I ha- actually I do have that one, but I have not played that one yet. Ah, oh, okay, all right, that's fine. I, I, that's fine. I got Thousand Year Door. I went through that. That was good stuff. That was good. That was good stuff. You're right. And then, just do me a favor. At some point in your life, play through Super Paper Mario, and then give me a comprehensive Honestly, review on it. Is it? Do they do force it. some some Wii on you? Is, is they that force a little you... bit of Wii on you? Not not an unbearing amount, but a little bit of Wii on you. That's why I won't play it. But we're talking, like we're talking to Kevin here, and he's a he's a Wii U fan, which it boggles me my my mind a little bit. Um, I'd rather play that than the Wii, honestly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, all day, all day long. Still, they're both not good. 
in my Fuck opinion. Fuck you guys. You y'all are, y'all are crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that later. We're gonna talk about that. What else you got going on in the shop, or is that uh, is that your your synopsis? I mean, that's basically everything. With uh, with a time like this, I don't want to take any airtime away from our, our good pal Captain Retro. But uh, one question I have for him, though. Yeah. Castlevania. Obviously, you're familiar with the title. Why would you think that? Uh, some, <laughs> something about his logo, maybe. Well, I thought that was. It's just. A... But, but recently, <laughs> and I'm talking probably three months ago, me me and a buddy had both never played through this game before, uh, the first one. So we played, right. yeah, we played through it, and it took us, yeah, I mean, whatever, a week or two, whatever it was, to not playing all the time. Whenever he would stop by the shop, we play it together, and like we kept on having problems with the game freezing near the end. We would get to the last boss, and it would freeze on us all the time. We have to start fresh, and it drove us nuts. Did you know there's a difference between the first release Castlevania yes. and the later yes. ones? Yeah, you the did, original eh? one had a glitch; you couldn't beat it. Yeah, it was the PRG zero versus the PRG one cartridge and you were playing yeah. through and we were on the prg zero and i just wanted to every time it would freeze on us we would get so damn pissed off that that happened and we had no idea but that's cool that you know that i like how you spent yeah. two days like two days yeah just going getting waking making your way back there fighting the boss freezing yeah and you're so, playing you're playing on original hardware too yes or original red? hardware okay, original so no state states Cause God, that would suck. It, it, man, it did, and we were not we were not experts at the game. Like, there's that that one area right before the last level. You get up there, and you got to get like the holy water and the crosses and whatever. Right, and right. There's, there's so many enemies, and you got those Medusa heads flying and stuff, and like that part that would kill us almost all the time. And yeah, to go back from the beginning after being at the final boss, like that just sucked, man. Hold that suck. Yeah, it's a it's a bitch. That game's I mean, even working that game's a bitch. So uh this one's too. I got this is a, a Castlevania Blood Moon. It's a ROM oh, yeah. hack. Yeah. It's a, like the first and third mixed together. It's awesome except for the fact that you can move while whipping, which throws my brain off because oh, yeah. all, all I've ever played is you stop while you whip, you know. Yeah, exactly. And well, I'll like walk that. right off ledges and fall into bad bad guys. I have not beaten this one yet. But I will. I'll get I'll get around to beating it. I, Castlevania, Metroid, um, and Zelda obviously are my three favorite series. I'm a Mario guy to a certain extent, but not that's that wasn't my favorite game as a kid. You know what I mean? Like it came with the machine. I considered it. Everybody has this. You, the other stuff you got to seek out, especially when you're spending your allowance at, at 12 and 13 years old on one game, buddy. Pick the one game, so it yep. better be the one game you you know what well, I mean? Yeah, like you... better better do your research. Yeah, you so. look at the box art and you think, oh, this game looks cool. Then you buy it and you find out it's complete garbage. I kind of wish God. that was still a thing. You had to Stop. base games purely off the box art. because that would, Thank that... God for, for store rental. Because, you know, having yeah. a blockbuster around as a kid really saved your pocket to a certain extent of, like, you. I rented everything that I thought looked cool. And 90% of it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's the true. Nintendo is a great console for about 40 games. Maybe, maybe 50 in all. The, the rest of them are... There's another 200 that are, eh, and then yep. the rest of them are crap. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. There is a lot of garbage on that thing. You say you're a Zelda fan, so what would be uh, what would be your favorite Zelda? The OG, the, the original. That's the first game okay, I ever beat your... all the way through. Really? Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm 39. We, we got a Nintendo in the summer of 88. So I, I was 12, or just turned 10, I guess, in 78, 78 to 88. So just turned 10. And uh, that was the first game. Like we got maps. We had an Odyssey too. I, I grew up with a Magnavox Odyssey too. Before awesome. that. No, wow. No, bro. no Atari. Uh, my cousins had one, but we didn't have that. And uh, my brother and I would we shared a room as kids, and we would play baseball on the Magnavox like pretty much every night. Baseball or uh, Casey's Crazy Chase or Pickaxe Pete, stuff like that. And uh, when we got the Nintendo, dude, like we sat down. We got we got Kung Fu Slalom. Mario Duck Hunt, obviously, because that came with the machine, and uh, Zelda, and I think Metroid came in very soon, soon thereafter. But Zelda was the the gold one, you know, like that. My dad bought that; he thought that one looked good because it was gold. <laughs> this one's different. It's this gonna be the best game, I bet. And he bought that. My, it was my, gold. Dad, my dad thinks like that, and he was right. Uh, <laughs> uh, that we would draw hand drawn maps, man. That took us months to get through that thing. You know, my brother and I have uh, somewhere 
in the house somewhere is is a folder with those pictures. Really? Yeah. That's awesome that you still have that. I like that. Yeah, I'll I'll try and dig them out and put them on an episode one day. That'd be cool to show everybody. That's we, killer. We I used mean, to hook up a VCR to the to the Nintendo and record tough sections of games to try and figure out patterns. Nice. Uh, so I have I have video game dedication. There you go. Video game on VCR tapes around here that's just old like uh, <laughs> the Indiana Jones game and. Of you just trying to play through it to, to figure out. That's hilarious. I love yeah, that. you try to figure out the patterns of the enemies and stuff. And instead yep. of dying, we'd sit there and watch what they were doing on the tape and then try and move around it, you know? So. Yeah, that's not. Zelda 1 is not an easy game. Okay, but I, this is my favorite thing ever. Because when we. So Shane had not played a Zelda game uh, at all. Not ever, one, ever. Not one. Up until last summer. And we, uh, we sat down and did side by side style in the shop. Uh. We were both playing through the game, and Shane, I, I refused to let Shane use a map, because... Oh, we, we bitched about this for hours. We went back and forth. We went real back and forth. But Shane was like, okay, well, you would get a box when you got the game, and the map would be in the box. Yes. So I should and, be entitled and, and, and... <laughs> to, to use a map. But I was like, okay, do you have the box? Well, no. Well, then you can't use a map. <laughs> so I just gave him shit, like, no, you can't. And Shane actually beat the game, the whole Legend of Zelda, original Legend of Zelda, bullshit and all, Without using any outside help, it was just him. You got to the lost game. woods by yourself. He did. Yes, that's incredible. You, honestly, that part I think took me at least twelve hours. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And it got to the point where I was not allowed to look anything up, and I wanted to stay true to this. If I'm beating a game without help, I'm beating a game without help. I don't. I want no help. No spoilers. You don't tell me shit. So we're playing this game. And I've tried everything. I've looked all over the damn world on how you're supposed to know how to figure out what to do. And I can't figure it out. And then I try, yeah, the typical northeast, southwest. No, nope, that's not it. Opposite direction. Over and over. Try random stuff. And I'm like, we're talking, I was stuck on this for hours. I would play it eight hours at the game shop here while I'm working. I would go home and I would just think about, like, what could I have possibly seen that would make <laughs> sense on what to possibly do here? So finally, I was so desperate because I wanted to keep going and beat this damn thing. I decided, you know what? Screw it. We're going to go up four times. Then we're going to go right four times. Then we're going to go down four times and process of elimination. I had a, a freaking notebook ready to go to cross things off of what I was doing. Yeah. And it ends up, oh, you go up four times. There that, you go. And that was it. <laughs> Done. Man, I couldn't believe it. I'll never forget that moment. Brilliant. Yeah. Top, uh, it, it gave you a sense of accomplishment too, though, to do that without. Oh any, yeah! Oh my God! Like, you hated me in the moment, but you got to be grateful now. Like you did that all on your own. Uh, it is. It's a cool accomplishment. It's, I mean, it's useless. It's not like it's ever gonna push me further in life. But, <laughs> no. but I, I, I still like. Do you I know? Will, man. It's problem solving and it's diligence and it's it's you know it's you that it's perseverance and there are things to be said about gaming and gaming accomplishments. Yeah, you're not wrong. The why is Captain Retro. Yeah, see, he's older than me, so he can pull out those type of quotes. and Those type of old fine. man quotes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's some gray hair in this beard. See, I can't wait to get the gray. Is that not I, all I gray? Just, I really want the gray, but I... I that's not all gray. It's just a little dark. No, see, that that's what I want. The salt and pepper. I like it. Yeah. yeah let's it's turning it. in... I, I think if I had hair, I would eventually get the Reed Richards, like, you know... Yeah. Sides. The, the white... And then some dark peppery, you know. You have no idea how much younger that hat makes you look. The second <laughs> yes, you take... <laughs> yes, I do. That's that's why I wear it. The second you take that off, you look 20 years older. I of course. I look, I look 40 when I pull a hat off. But yeah. when I got the hat on, I was like, this guy could be 25, maybe. 20, 28. Okay, 30 or so. All right, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Um, look, just because you're the fucking guy on YouTube with the fucking best head of hair doesn't mean you can give bald guys shit, okay, little kid? I'll Obviously. slap you in the fucking teeth. <laughs> I'm, yeah. getting, I'm getting told on my own podcast. I'll, I'll gladly slap him for you, man. That's, please, that's, please, that's give no him problem. one good smack. We'll do it for you. <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you a video on it. It'll be good. There we go. You know, he he shouted us out in our own podcast. We might as well give him a little little shout. Uh, Captain Retro, if you guys don't know who this guy is, he's a, he's a weird collector guy. He's a, the mo probably the most enthusiastic old man I've ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you should ch totally check out his channel, Captain Retro. He does something called the Captain Retro Show. Uh, old video game picks up, pickups, uh, doing you know pinball, arc old arcade machine restorations, and that's what you're segueing into lately. That's that's the new stuff. Yeah, lately I've been doing more of that than there's the pickup videos are coming back, but I'm really trying to go towards arcades and yeah, restoration. 
Yeah, so there you go. If anyone's uh, you know down with that, be sure to check him out. Uh, he's, if I have a moderator in the chat, you want to just throw his link in in the chat for people to yeah, uh, just for perfect drop him a sub. Okay, so we got Damien wanting to slap me. Shane here is gonna slap me. Kevin wants to slap me. Kai was real ready to slap me. If anybody else wants to hit me, now is the time. <laughs> Lining up. Line up. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Anyway, moving forward. Moving forward. We want to jump into this console thing? Actually, we should talk about Mario 64 versus Mario Sunshine. Okay. Because this, I just, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> I, this is a, this is a, a Shane Wall versus, versus <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> well, his name is like Kevin Culkin. <laughs> or something. Kevin McAllister. Kevin McAllister. <laughs> All right, so my, my my true name is Kevin Coughlin, and it's it's spelled Coughlin. Yeah, like I, I said, Macaulay Culkin. I usually get called Kevin Costner a lot, so that's it's it's very close. There you go, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner could be worse. <laughs> could be worse. Shane, what could be Macaulay better? Culkin. What do you what do you better, Mario sixty four or Mario Sunshine? Yeah, we're gonna take Mario sixty four all day, bud. Kevin, how you how do you feel? Now, number one, like how can you go all day? Like okay, all day. Here we go. The graphics are shit in Mario 64, like complete shit. When they came out, they were okay, but even then they were That's all that matters. Giant poly. I'm not just saying the the controls are okay. The controls are exactly the same in Mario Sunshine. So how can that be? How can oh, better but they're graphics worse. be worse? Do what? They're worse. Oh, oh, they're worse on Sunshine. They're worse. You don't like flood. That's your problem. You don't like that flood. <laughs> No, I I've uh, I liked 64 when it came out, but it wasn't a revolutionary blowing my mind off like Ocarina did. Ocarina taking Zelda into a 3D world like that was way more cool than. Oh come on, you can't even jump. <laughs> you don't need to jump in Zelda. You got a sword. It <laughs> was a pathetic argument. Come on, <laughs> we can't jump. See, I don't love uh, I don't love Ocarina, so I I can't I can't talk about it too much because I never played it. So you right. played through two dungeons, I think. Yeah, something like that. No, my right. honestly, like the reason I hate Sunshine so much, and I, I don't know if you've heard it. I've, I've talked about it. Before, if you say the music, I'll be upset. No, the no, music. the music's fine. The, the music's right. totally fine. But my biggest problem with it is there would be there would be certain when you jump into a level and you pick one of your six or eight. Was it eight in Sunshine? There's eight shines you could get in each level. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So you pick one out of those eight. There was not a guaranteed 100 coins in each one out of those eight. So say you choose number one, and, and then you decide to go for the 100 coin shine sprite. Well, there would only be 85 coins in that level on that one shine. And once I figured that out, like I looked it up online with our dial-up internet, and that was not a thing. Like There were certain ones where you could get the 100 coins and certain ones where you couldn't, and that just like pissed me off to no end. And that, like, I think I stopped playing the game after that because I was so mad. Okay, so that makes you like a way different gamer than me because I don't even bother about I, who cares about all this. Part? Like, I got enough to get through the stage and get to the next level. Like, I'm not a completionist, so I, I, uh, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know you couldn't get a certain amount of coins on certain levels. I've beaten, I've beaten Sunshine a couple times, but I've never like 100 percent completed it. So, yeah, like I, I beat it. I beat Bowser, and, and that level was cool. But, yeah, I didn't like Flood. I didn't like that they got rid of the, the long jump and stuff like that. It, it, I do, I do, did, I did, yeah, there, I, you could use the long jump. That can come back. I'd be down with that. Yeah, and just the whole, like, the whole water thing in, in general. Like, I didn't love it. I didn't like that you had to use this hover thing all the time. I felt like that took away from the skill that it would take to get some of the stuff in Mario 64. I mean, I can see your arguments. Uh, my problem with with Super Mario 64 is that it's just so fucking hard. To, the camera was terrible. Everybody talks about how good of a camera it is, and it's a terrible camera. And it just it's hard to, I don't know, it was just hard to like, orient yourself in that game to me. I'm sorry, but you cannot argue that uh, that Mario 64 has a bad camera and say that Sunshine has a good camera. It's, it is I, I didn't bad. say Sunshine has a good camera. I'm just saying the polygons are nicer to look at in Sunshine. <laughs> I mean, I guess. If it's the same shitty camera, it's still easier to on the eyes in in Sunshine and and GameCube games for the most part hold up, at least visually, sure. way better than the sixty four do. For sure. Yeah. Uh, now, not again, not that graphics make the game, the story and the playability make the game, uh, which again I thought St Sunshine was a I like the little crazy um, Mario Chrome looking dude that's you know the running around spreading all the paint that turns out to be Bowser's kid. 
And spoilers! I, whoa, whoa, sorry. whoa! Spoiler! Twenty-four year old spoiler. Damn it! <laughs> uh, when did that game come out? Early two thousands, I guess. Two thousand two. It would okay. Been. Oh, by so, the way, Yoda dies in the new Star Wars. By the way, Yoda what? was a puppet again in the new Star Wars, which was great. They, they, he was a whole a puppet. puppet. Like he's back in, to being he's a puppet. The... Whoa, whoa, whoa! I actually didn't know that. Whoa, stop, stop. Oh, sh am I giving spoilers? Yeah, All you're right. giving spoilers. Mine was a joke, man. <laughs> Yoda died thirty years ago. Hey, what are you doing? On, hold on, hold on. He's a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, in the original Star the original Wars, he was, Star Wars a he was a puppet. You can't see it like they they have it set to books technically. like technically made by Jim Henson's it's people. Really cool. He's a puppet. Are you serious? Yeah, he's a puppet. Yeah. Watch Star Wars just once. It's not it's not it's in it's the it's prequels. Oh, well, in the first prequel, when, when in the first, I feel in, a, in, in Phantom Menace, he's a puppet as well. But in, in the second and third ones, they went to CGI so they could have him fight and shit. But in the original three, he <laughs> is just a puppet. Don't bring a purple dragon looking guy. I'm gonna no, him. I'm not bringing that. No, honestly, I I I I feel like Link when he's climbing into a chest to open the chest because I know so <laughs> little about Star Wars. I'm getting a lot of new information here. <laughs> and one, one of the things I would love to do is my, my brother and I were basically the same person. We, we both have not seen Star Wars. We don't know what that is. We have no idea. And we want to start a podcast where we basically describe the Star Wars world uh, to everybody. We'll review the movies and whatever. Without knowing a damn lick we, about we it. We honestly don't. Like, honestly, the most Star Wars information I've received uh, a lot now, Yoda was a puppet. That's new. I, I did not know that. Also... <laughs> Uh, Toy Story 2 had a lot of Star Wars crossover things, mm -hmm. so I base a lot of uh, Toy Story 2 in, in my idea of what Star Wars is, but I honestly don't know anything. I don't know a damn thing. Like, you should watch them. They're good, and watch them in order. In order of what? Four, five, six, one, two, the three, order seven, that they eight, were, nine. They're originally released. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I would do it if I would ever watch it. But he won't. He but won't. honestly, I've, I've made it 28 years without watching it, and I might as well just keep going. <laughs> uh, that's, that's so heartbreaking. That's not I, a way to think. I, I will say I've never seen Titanic, so we're we're in the same kind of boat. I watched that never one time. It. Was it worth uh, it? No, I, it's not that fuck? good. I don't think hey, it, I, I, I wouldn't think so. Does the boat go down? Yeah, okay, I'm good. I don't need to see that fucking yeah, Spoilers what? again. God damn it, Kevin. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler alert. Yeah, I read I read the books and the articles and that's I've been to a museum. Me. I saw some coal and shit they brought up from the, I've been to a museum. I've seen some things that actually came from the Titanic. I'm good. All right, I'm gonna steer this boat back to back to Mario for one second. Steer here. the boat. Steer in the boat. And again, it's not that I don't like Super Mario 64. It's a fine game, but my preference is Sunshine. And what were you what were you basing that off of exactly? The <clears throat> just the way it looks, like visually. Uh, the playability of it is a little bit more to me. I like it better. It's I, I like Mario in Mario 64 is so fat and blocky and like the camera's kind of like right behind him and at least in Sunshine you can get up further away and like move it around and really see the course and you feel like the game like, plays tighter is that what you're getting at here is that a little bit tighter the controls are a little bit tighter at least without the flood hovering jetpack thing I mean that thing's kind of wonky to use and, and making sure that your camera's in the right angle to hit certain things when you're spraying water is a pain in the ass like I, Mario Sunshine has its flaws but musically, I like it better. Like, I don't even know the song from Mario 64, but I know the song from Sunshine. You know what I mean? Like, the main theme that happens in Isle Delfino. Like, that bums me out. How do you not know Bomb on Battlefield? Come on. Again, but, uh, and I will say this. Also, when 64 hit, I was in college, man. So we played Smash if we played it, and we played Goldeneye. And that was, cool. those were the two games. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we played. And maybe a little bit of Rogue Squadron here and there. There you go. I was That's too busy game. going to class and not playing. Like, if I was playing anything, it was PlayStation 1, Mortal Kombat 2, and stuff like that. All right, so my next question then. In, in your opinion, what's the more impressive game at the time? Mario 64 in 96 oh. or Sunshine in 2002? Easily 64. Mario 64 is the more impressive for its time. Uh, Mario Mario Sunshine is the best of what we can do. Watch this. You know what I mean? It didn't come out. The, the GameCube didn't launch with, with Sunshine, did it? No. No, I came up with Luigi's Mansion and Wave Race. The same, the same thing they did with the Odyssey. They're like, we're, we're going to sculpt a perfect Mario game, and we're going to put it out when we want to. It's not going to be based on having to need it for the launch cycle or whatever. So, like, Mario Sunshine is, here's the best 3D platforming Mario game we can build as of 2002. You know what I mean? It's not... They're not trying to push boundaries, kind of like what they did with. I like what they've gone in the new direction with Odyssey. I like the hat throwing aspect and yep. different things, man. Like they really did. They keep it the same, but they throw in a couple little twists every time. And 
Sometimes yeah, was, they hit, sometimes they miss. You know, they hit they hit for me in Sunshine, but they missed for you in Sunshine. And they hit for me in Odyssey, and they hit for a lot of people in Odyssey. So uh to also, the gamer bros, thank you for stopping by, man. Have a great night. You won't um, see me running around in one of those hats. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right. So p- purely for my interest, because I know how I feel about them, I know how Shane feels about them. Where do you stand on the Galaxy games? Like where what do you feel how do you feel about those? Never beaten either one, played a little bit. The the soundtrack is incredible. That's full orchestrated, beautiful like orchestra music, and it's amazing that again, I'm a, I'm a music guy, mu- musician, so I, I I really do gravitate towards the music in games and the things that like that. So I know that the songs are really cool. I've played a little bit more of Galaxy One. I might have played like two or three levels on Galaxy Two, but they seem fun and cool. But again, nothing earth shattering. Okay, fair enough. That's why they're ten dollar games. They're all right. <laughs> People like to argue they're the best ones. Uh, I, I don't, I can't get behind that. <laughs> no, the best ones are the, the best one overall is Super Mario Three. Hands like for a Super Mario game, Super Mario Three, and maybe Super Mario yeah. Land, or Super Mario World. Yeah, playing. yeah, those are the two that that always stick out to me as being very, yeah. very, very good. And yes, I, I can't choose between them because. Highly replayable. Oh, completely. And I don't know what's more impressive, Mario 3 running on an NES or Mario World running on a Super NES. Like, they're just... Yeah. If you look at that difference from Mario 1 to Mario 3, that is incredible. Right. I still get... Yeah, again, look... We've talked about that. I'm looking at Mario 3 and Mario 1 and, and thinking that they're on the same console is insane. It's unbelievable. It is crazy how different graphically those games are. Kevin, do you want to just turn off your webcam and turn it back on? Did it, did we freeze? Yeah, your picture froze. The old freezings. That's what they call me. I got the Brandon freezing. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. I haven't heard hey, that joke. How are you? Am I back? Yeah, okay. you're good to go. So, okay, so Mario Sunshine and 64. What I'm hearing here is that you like Mario 64 because platforming feels more like platforming. That seems seem that seems where you're at. Like, because with Flood, it kind of takes some of the platforming elements out of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it just it made it. As with everything on the GameCube, it made it easier towards that younger generation. Although still fun, it's mm-hmm. still whatever, it just made it easier. And I felt like I was playing on a normal difficulty on Mario 64, and Mario Sunshine is just an easier difficulty. Like, I love the the sprites you had to get when your your flood got taken away, and then you had to run on these acapella music-sounding areas. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was, oh man, those were sweet. And the music, the music there. was so good. That was flawless. Yeah, the the three D like little platforming sections where Flood is missing is all those are great. Yeah, yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons I kept playing that game just to just to keep getting to, to those. Which was a precursor to some of the stuff in Galaxy. It seems like you know, there's a lot of things like that in Galaxy that's. And they kind of went back to an Odyssey a little bit. You'd go into like uh, the first one they gave was New Dunk City. If you go into that one building, then bam, you're suddenly in this weird space, like just sky area doing the same kind of thing. Yeah. So they brought that back again, which is neat. Oh, there's a billion little Easter eggs in Odyssey. Oh, that game Odyssey. is so good. That game is so good. Yeah, it's, it's quite fun. All right, for sure. But again, I, I would say, I don't say either one are better. I, let's let's put the in the in the argument here. They're neither better. I prefer to play, if I'm going to, if you gave me two on a desert island, I would play Sunshine first. But I would also want to play Super Mario 64 eventually. <laughs> Would you even touch Sunshine if you were on Desert Island? Or would you just play Mario 64 twice? I would play Mario 64 probably five times first and then go to Sunshine. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> just because, Matt, I, I feel like the, the age I was, like when I bought that game, I would have been, what, 13, I think? And whatever. When you're a teenager, you're stupid. You, you're, you're, Thanks. Your life choices and your, your opinions are just, they mean nothing. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're still a I, I concur. I'm 19. So, so maybe, maybe, like, I think I went with the GameCube, which was a mistake overall. I should have gone with, with the PS2 or the X. No, not the Xbox. The PS2 I, I should have gone with. But that controller just sucks. I just can't, can't do that. But, yeah, and, like, all my buddies, they got the PS2s and the Xboxes, and I had to work my ass off to, to pay for the GameCube for myself and, and buy these games and stuff. And it was just underwhelming. That whole generation was just underwhelming for me. We got a lot of comments from MC Murr here. Uh, if you don't know MC Murr, he's another YouTuber. He's kind of, I feel like he's the even the, the even more Captain Retro, Captain Retro. Uh, um, 
So we got Mario 64 said standards. That said, he never really asked for a 3D Zelda. Uh, Mario 3 is the best. Galaxy is pretty fun. Uh, we got Mario 64, the phenomenal soundtrack. I'd say that Bomb and Battlefield. Bomb and Battlefield really does rock. I was watching a review of it's somebody. The bomb. Pardon? It's the bomb. It's it's the bomb. Uh, it's funny, Kai. Kai with the good. puns. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I was watching a review of Mario 64 just because I like to watch reviews of games I've already played to see other people's opinions. And so this guy reviewing the game, the first thing he was ta- when he talked about the soundtrack, he's like, none of the songs in this game are memorable. And I just that made my jaw drop. Of like how. Is Bomb on Battlefield not memorable? Like, I, I, I don't know if I've ever been to the Bomb on Battlefield. It's the first stage in the game. You have oh, is to it? To, you <laughs> have to go to Bomb on Battlefield. <laughs> I don't fucking, I don't know, dude. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I played 64. Or, uh, again, like I, I told you, I can't recall. It's like, you tell me what the Avengers music is. What's Ant-Man's theme song? <laughs> you don't know because okay. they're fucking generic pieces of shit. And that's why you can, but you can sing Star Wars or you can sing Superman's theme song because it's not a generic piece of shit. No offense to Koji Kondo. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. I get, I get heated about music, man. Being a musician, and I, I guess that makes me conceited about it, but like, I feel like my job as a musician is not only to learn and play and, and, and do music, but to totally fucking if, if i don't like something i tell you why yeah and i, I know what you mean <laughs> you made well, your intro tune yeah yeah that's all me and my buddy chad that's wicked all right. what uh what do you play a little bit of everything uh bass out in my rock band i was the lead singer and then i decided to be the bass playing lead singer and then i was just the bass player and secondary singer when i replaced myself as a lead singer but I play guitar and piano and a little bit of drums, a little bit of everything. MC Murr is a accomplished guitar player himself. Right on. Uh, metal band, like old school, like deathcore screaming metal. It's scary. Yeah. MC Murr was a scary musician. <laughs> but now he's all grown up and he's got kids and he's a big chump. <laughs> I like Shane. Yeah. I'm just kidding, you big chump. <laughs> yeah, man, I tried to learn that guitar stuff and that was I just can't do it. You're a born I, drummer. I picked up drums so fast and it just it hit me and it just changed my life basically like drums just became life now like songs all of a sudden you're just studying the same song for like a month to make sure you you know exactly how they're doing it what they're doing and i tried the guitar thing afterwards and no forget that i I can't do that not a chance chunky fingers (laughs) sure maybe that's it's a lot of repetition and muscle memory but once it sticks it sticks and it's kind of like riding a bike. I, I haven't sat with a guitar in probably six to eight months now, and, but I could grab one at any time and start playing again. It's It'll come back to you. For sure, man. All right, we'll move on. We'll move on to our, our second kind of bulky topic here. Uh, in your opinion, and in Shane's opinion, and We're in my so opinion. Boy. That's what I was going to Come on, man. That's the joke in every podcast. The, uh, the best... It, it, what is the best Nintendo console? The best the best console Nintendo release based on not necessarily sales, but based on games, uh, quality, thought put into the console. What what's the best thing that, that Nintendo's ever put out? In in your opinion, Kevin, uh, home or handheld? If you think there's a handheld better than a home console, then feel free to pick a handheld. Well, I mean, if you're going by sales, isn't the 3DS like the most sold thing ever? We're not going by sales. Quality of games. We're going quality. Uh, Super Nintendo has a plethora of amazing shit. Um, For if you're into, you know, 2D and and beginnings of 3D gaming. Um, The Switch is pretty outstanding, though. I'll tell you you that much. I, I like the Wii U. I like the Wii. It was neat when it first hit. Uh, but it, probably the Super Nintendo is my favorite of the Nintendo consoles. I think it's the first time we've heard someone the, the, the phrase "I like the Wii" on the, ever. Just, yeah, yeah. In all sixty first, episodes, I, I am man, not. the Wii's got some fun games. No, uh, you, know, you, you can't knock it. It's got a lot of shovelware poop, but it's got a lot of fun games too. I can't do it. I, no, I honestly can't do it. <laughs> man, I, I I tried for about forty-five minutes one time, and I just can't do it. What play a game on the Wii? Just acknowledging well, uh, Damien's comment for one second. He's he's convinced that we're all Nintendo fanboys. I, I am, and I'll admit I am. Shane's not. Kevin you likes you definitely are a Nintendo fanboy. Yeah. I'm a fan of them up until like 97, 98. 
Here's what I'll say. But j after that, I just I really don't care about them very much. The reason we're ranking Nintendo consoles is because there is something unique to every Nintendo console. If we're going to rank PlayStation consoles, we're all going to say PS4. That's just what it is. PS4 is the second coming of the PS2, and it's pretty incredible. It's an amazing time. If, if we're going to touch on that a little bit, the, the, the whole PS4 library right now, it, it, it's just incredible. It has a yeah. little bit of everything that I... I <laughs> I just kind of I, I don't understand why people are even buying an Xbox One. It, it blows my mind that that people are choosing to purchase an Xbox One over a PS4. It just I just I don't even understand it at all. Yeah, it seems like every time I go in a GameStop once a month or so, there's 15 new titles that I had no idea were sitting there for a PS4 that you know weren't yeah. new. They were just they were just something I missed last time I was in there looking at stuff. I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is this? They're, it's great. Yeah, and all their flash sales, I'll go on there, and there, there's like five titles that I haven't heard of that, oh, that, that's a Japanese RPG. Well, sign me up. Bye. Right Fairy now. Fencer F, Advent Dark Force. Yeah. That's the beta. Peach Beach Splash. Peach Beach Splash. No, I sold that thing already. <laughs> what? what? Someone bought it? Yeah. Holy you didn't mention okay, to bring uh, that up in shop trades? You can't no. Kid? Yeah. You can't oh, just... Wow. I mean, Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. Man. No What's your way. favorite non-Nintendo console? My favorite non-Nintendo console, I honestly love the, the marketing of the Sega Genesis more than I love the Sega Genesis. So that's always... A, Market, a the marketing one. was ballsy. It was amazing. That That yeah. is that is top-notch stuff. MC Murr is a Sega guy. He is... Oh, a, right on. You and way, MC Murr could talk for hours. Way, way more. I mean, he's a Nintendo guy too, but he's way more Sega than he is. And so that's what he had growing up. So he was my buddy. Me and him have known each other since like fifth or sixth grade, fifth grade. Something like that. We, right but we Aww. fell out of touch after high school, and we, in fact, found each other on YouTube making videos about games. That's incredible, eh? That's pretty, cute. pretty incredible. Like That's that. awesome. And uh, he, he had a Master System and a Genesis growing up. That he was the only kid I knew that had like us the Genesis, you know. So that's we would, we played. I'd go to his house to play Sega, and he'd hang out with me to play Nintendo as kids. Right on. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with with the Genesis. I love that. But if we're going non Nintendo, like the, that PS4 is just it's growing on me all the time. It's it hasn't been out like too terribly long, but it's just I've had so many awesome gaming experiences on this thing. Mostly because I was a 360 guy last generation. Me too. Which was a terrible mistake. Looking back, I don't know what I was thinking. You had Fable too. Well, I, no, the Xbox 360 was an incredible machine. The Xbox One sucks my dick. <laughs> <laughs> it really it doesn't, it doesn't pay me and it doesn't do the dishes and I'm upset about it it needs to fucking lo learn to do something and pick up its own well, man, it's got Cuphead it does have Cuphead and Cuphead I do have Cuphead cool. and that's it's fun is it worth 600 bucks or whatever I spent initially on this well, Sunday it's Cuphead that's what you got <laughs> you got Cuphead I feel like that, brother, that whole the Switch has game joke you stick with the Xbox my brother is an Xbox one and he refuses to convert. So if I want to play Battlefield or a game with my brother, I have to have the same machine. Oh, yeah. If you're an Xbox fanboy, you're going to stay an Xbox fanboy just so you, because you like the name Xbox. It's just how it is. Honestly, it's got a better controller, better online yeah. uh, networking, but that's, that's kind of where it stops. No, the, the Xbox one doesn't at all. That's the problem with Xbox one to me is that you can't keep a party together. You can't keep a game together. You get thrown out of chat. You get thrown out of lobbies. On Worse everything than, well, than, than PlayStation Network? I honest to God have, have had it happen maybe twice on PlayStation Network. In like, really? Yeah. I have really good internet here too, which is my, it can't be me. It's got to be something sure. wrong with the game or the box or the servers or the companies that don't give a fuck. I, I'm sick of buying something that's not down, that's not on the disc. You know what I mean? When you go buy a game, you stick it in and it's 17 gigs yeah. of download. And you're like, what? I still can't believe that. Yeah, it that is sense. super. You couldn't annoying. have gotten away with this in 1991. You couldn't have done it. You couldn't have put out a cartridge. You know, even though the technology didn't exist, but like you weren't ready, you missed your deadline. That's exactly. That's exactly what it is. And and never mind. Oh, the servers is down. You can't update your PS4 or your Xbox One now because everybody's unwrapping these as Christmas gifts. So now you're screwed. You can't play this stuff anymore. Yeah. So now you got to wait three, four days. And oh, the the hacker group Anonymous is hacking it now, and now we can't do anything for three weeks. It, it 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 sucks in a way. It could be a Canadian internet thing that that maybe. Although I feel the like server Canadian... issue isn't. That's not a. That was not a Canadian thing. That was just their servers were overloaded and whatever. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. Uh, what are we even talking about? Your, so your favorite non Nintendo console is a PS4. That's what you're getting at here. Yeah, and I hate to be the the new 
like to pick a new system that just seems weird but it's honestly, an incredible choice it's, it's, it's a great choice it's and it's an ever-growing <laughs> library of games that there's already so many for I mean, there's just tons of awesome experiences to have on this thing and i also i've spent probably more time on my ps4 than i have I'd like to know the hours I spent on my NES back in the day and the hours I spent on my PS4 because now that I run a game shop, I can literally play my PS4 all day long. Or play you have been playing it since you opened. It's been a lot of PS4. We've had little waves of Super Shh. NES. And but that thing's always NES, been on your desk. That's been your go-to. It's on the desk, yeah. Uh, the Namco Wonders one. I thought that would be your choice personally. but uh, Mine, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm weird. I'm stuck. And like I, I, I don't... I haven't played a lot of the super retro stuff that you're super into NES. Like I, like I have a relationship with it, but not as nearly as much as you do. I don't have a relationship with the PS4 or Xbox, like new generation games like you do. I'm stuck in the fifth generation area, and uh, if I can't pick a Nintendo console, then I, I really like the PS2. Uh, you hate that thing. Or at least I'm you using the... one now. True, yeah, you're playing... Well, okay, you're using for a PS1 game, but... Yeah. Yeah, I love the PS2. Uh, the controller could be better. But everything from when you just uh, just boot the thing up and those like monoliths come up at you, like the opening is just <laughs> sweet. That is fantastic. I yeah. love that with the sound. And then you have that iconic, just the lights and the black screen with the browser and system configuration. Uh, I like the menu just to begin with. And then that library is massive. Uh, I'm, I collect for my GameCube mostly at the moment. Um, but whenever I get around to be done with that, the PS2 is something I really want to just have a huge collection for because of the amount of games on that thing. Yeah, it's what, 1,400 games, I think? Well, they were making them up until, what, 2010? Like, when was the last one come out? I like, thought it was 12 or 14. Like, you had still had FIFA 14 on that thing. Yeah, you had PS2 games coming up forever on the... My, my Walmart still has a couple copies of Grand Theft Auto, like the triple pack. Nice. It, by City and San Andreas and the original, or part three. On PS2. PS2 sealed, they're 20 bucks, 19.99. That's crazy. I can't believe that. I, I think I, I got Well, them. that's that's 20 bucks American, so about $4,000 Canadian. So. <laughs> that's about the conversion. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. Well, wait till the Bitcoin takes over and then we yeah, won't have these problems. Ugh, don't even just start it on Bitcoin. We got Nate in here. We're going to have a Nate episode. No, we will not. <laughs> Come on, it'll be fun. I would say my favorite non Nintendo console. Panasonic 3DO. No. Oh. Probably the Magnavox Odyssey 2, because no. that's what I grew up on. And, man, there are way it's, – it's better looking than the Atari. It, it, the games handle better than the Atari. They're, it's still fun to play today. It's got a little voice box on top yep. that talks to you and stuff. Like, I love it. That's cute. It's got a giant keyboard. I cry. Honest to God, this game right here, this was the last game I needed for my childhood collection of – to get all the stuff that I could remember we had. And this is basically the Lord of the Rings. It's called the Quest for the Rings, but it's for the Magnavox Odyssey too. And uh, as a grown man last year at Retropalooza, I broke down and cried when I finally acquired a complete copy of this game. Um, it's got a, it's actually a board game, basically. Like, it's got the, the game stuff in here too. But there's little game pieces that you put down on the board. Uh, and then there's, like, little maps and shit. And, like, this is something my brother and I had no idea how to play when we were little kids, but we uh -huh. tried to play it all the time. And we made up our own rules for it. You know sure, what I mean? Like, yeah. we, were, we didn't really know what we were doing. Neither of us could read. That, that's how small we were. But we would put this on there and start pushing buttons, and it just uh, the, the flood of nostalgia hit me, and I fucking started crying. And it's on, it's on the episode. I, I cry on that episode about when I got this. Aww. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried. By God, things make you cry. I would cry too if I loved Mario Sunshine, so I totally understand, man. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's wicked, though. That's that's pretty sweet. That's not what I would have expected you to say. I've had no Magnavox Odyssey anything come through the shop, or been I've old? been I've been collecting for the last 13 to 15 years, and I have not come across any of anything Magnavox Odyssey related. We're in Canada. Like it's it collecting it's is tough, tough finding here. anything here, aside from in NES. Ontario area where where y'all? We are in the dead center of North America. If you 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 do all the the mathematics you want, we are in the dead center of North America, which is the southern part of the middle of Canada. We're honestly about an hour away from the border. We could go down there and We're drink some garbage beer and and hang out with you guys, but. 
Why would we do that when we can stay up here? Yeah, we can just some molten ice. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not even sure where we're going from here. I'm gonna drink some Red Bull. Sponsor? Not really. Not not really sponsor. Red Bull, contact us. We've been waiting. We sent you 14 emails. I don't know why we keep getting these uh, failed delivery statuses as if we're blocked. I'm not sure what, what's up with that, but. <coughs> we got MC Muir asking, uh, or no, it was Dr. Pest actually asking, or Dr. Pete, as Brandon would say, if the net neutrality crap is going to affect Canada at all. Our laws are actually very good with that. We are totally fine. That won't be an issue for us. For now. But that anyway. That's going to suck, man, if that actually it goes through. For us. It won't go through. I mean, I, it just can't. They made the, the decision, but it... Man, have you seen how many states are suing the FCC for that? Yeah. It is. I oh, love yeah, the unreal. stand being taken against it because yeah, that it's is unreal. the the whole world's changing, and you know, America, we're at a brink of like this old regime has got to go. And I don't know how Trump got fucking elected, but it makes me fucking sick. And I I feel like he's going to be impeached any day. And I didn't want to take this to politics, but like any day now, oh, some the last hammer, the last shoe is going to fall, and the whole damn system is going to crumble. And just you watch, like. No, we're just gonna call my boss Damien, and he's gonna take my spot here for a few minutes because uh, I'm sure he has a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. Well, talk. I don't. I mean, again, like I'm 39, and I've never had to care about politics in my life. That makes me sound white and privileged, but like we are white and privileged. <laughs> my life didn't revolve, and now everything I see online is some other person getting arrested for molesting, or you know what I mean? Like it's all this swarm of evil. And hopefully they're getting it all in a big bag and they're going to chuck it out in the space and we won't have to deal with this shit anymore. And by the time that people are my age are the ones running the country, that shit will be long history. You know what I mean? Like when the 40-year-olds and the 50-year-olds start becoming the guys in power, which is going to happen, you know, that those the crazy old regimes of weird misogyny and crap that goes on in this country will stop. I, we, one can pray. So maybe me and you run for for the, the powers in our respective countries. There we go. And we'll see Sounds how far we get. We want me final boss, pr Prime Minister of Canada, and then Captain Retro, <laughs> President of the United States. All right, so we're legally changing our names. Final boss. And Captain, Captain Retro. Retro. There we go. I like Sounds that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I was just going to, you know, we'll wind things down. Uh, Winding down. A little bit. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> Uh, if anybody has any questions to end things off for myself, Shane, or Kevin, and throw them in the chat, and we'll we'll do as many of them as we can. I'm sure there's gonna be like one, if that. Uh, but so I really hope my mom's not watching. But I had uh, a very new experience today. Oh, fantastic! A blumpkin. N no. Okay. <laughs> no. No one's agreed to that yet. That's no. The, but the I I sold. Well, it's not new. He's had those before. Well, he's tried. I sold my house or, or a condo, as you put it, today. Oh, nice! Congratulations! And, and I wasn't—I I, I don't know if it's a congratulations, wow. honestly. Wow. Um, I wanted to keep it as a rental unit, and I wanted to start getting properties and, and have all this rental stuff going. But I sold my house today, and I don't know what to think about it because since our our shop is a new shop and it's my main source of income, I I need to be running this for two years before I can go to the bank and say, "Hey, I want a new mortgage." So that two years is, is coming up in May, and at that point, we're going to have to see how much I claim on my income tax to see what I can get approved for. So technically, May 25th, I'm going to be homeless. Yeah. Unless there's something else. Yeah. So I might be living in the game shop or with the, the, uh, the in-laws for, for a while. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Don't live with the in-laws. Come up with me and Kai. We got it. We is it possible? Yeah, is it possible? Do y'all have land? And I, I know that there are some places in America that do this, but like, could you have a shop that is attached to a home? Like, could you have a condo? Yeah, I could, but the problem is being in the city that we're in to find a residential area that you could also would be commercial in right. yeah, as a commercial thing. It just it wouldn't quite work properly, and you'd be spending way too much money anyway because they value right. that as a lot more. Which is kind of a That's my dream here. I, I kind of wanted to open a retro shop slash barcade that was like a pinball arcade and a sure. bar you know, and a little bit of a retro store and then live in it too because what the fuck? I wouldn't want to leave there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Why yeah, leave yeah, when yeah. you're – You know, Pee Wee's Playhouse, I'm pretty sure he had a bed there. I, that's that's kind of what I want to do. I want to be the Pee Wee's Playhouse that's a, a, a retro shop and a bar. 
But why wouldn't you? Yeah, if I was honestly, if I was single, I would absolutely live in this place. Yeah, we, we have we have a sink and a bathroom over there. You can wash a, in it. There you go. There's a sink. I might fit in the sink. I haven't tried. Little whore's bath, real quick. Tops and tail. Yeah, we just we would make it work. Yeah, man. Like um, this, you. Would, problem is i'm not single and and my wife would not be excited to to move in here with me she actually doesn't care about games at all yeah even a little Nothing. bit no she like mario party yeah she bit. plays mario party a bit but she just i don't know how she supports me in doing this but she does <laughs> she's really the amazing. one she's the one clearly you married her good work good choice yeah we're gonna chalk that up as a win yeah, there was a there was a time where we were joke like, yeah, I'm gonna move in the podcast room, hundred bucks a month, and I would just live back here. That's right. Yeah, that was a joke. And then Asa wanted to live back here. <laughs> yes, that's also right. Yes, yeah, yeah. What one of these days someone will move into this back room and just sleep on this tiny love seat we got over there. It's a comfortable love seat. That's just yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, what's the deal with poutine? Oh. It's fries with cheese curds and then gravy on top. And Jesus it's amazing. Let me tell you something. It is good as balls. It is. It is fantastic. If you haven't had a poutine, I don't know what you're you're you're, you're missing out on life. We the honestly have full on restaurants that all they serve poutine. is poutine. Poutineries. Yeah. They'll have twenty to thirty different kinds of poutine. With bacon. poutineries, is that what they're called? They're called poutineries. Yes. My God. If you Dude, ever see it's, uh, it's just unreal. If you ever going, you know, hiking through Canada on your snowshoes, and you ever see Rudy's poutine truck. Be sure to stop. Be sure to stop by. Be sure to stop by and pick up. <laughs> You'd appreciate the business. I've been trying to convince. I have a I have a buddy from grade four, and I I convinced him. I don't know where I came up with this stupid idea, but it came up some just out of high school. So we're talking. This has been going on for eight or nine years. Where I'm trying to convince him to buy a food truck and make it a poutine truck, and he just hates the idea. <laughs> but I, I don't let it down. I, I still ask him. I work with him every now and then, and I still ask him all the time. So are we starting this poutine truck thing, man? Like you get, you get in that truck. Like I, I, I'll go buy an auto trader. I'll give it to him. Like, hey, man, there's some really good food truck ideas in here. We could really make this a thing. And we can go to Vista Print. We can get the banners printed off. We can get business cards. Like everything, man. This is gonna be perfect. Yeah. And he just hates it. Oh, <laughs> you've been doing it for years too. Years, man, years. And it's not even funny anymore, but I find amusement in it, so I keep going. Oh, so, you'll beat a joke to, to death. Completely to death. Like Long to. past death. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, now, yeah, okay, we'll start to wrap things up here. Wrapping up. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys, again, if you have not already, uh, did you ever throw a link in the chat? He did. Yeah, why don't you throw Into one more? His? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you throw another one? Yeah, we're very thankful. Uh, thank you. The Captain Retro decided to join us today. It's awesome, man. It's good to actually talk to you, meet you, see your two copies of Zelda. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> there's there's three. Technically. Oh, okay, sorry. For sorry. sure. So, sorry. so what's your favorite piece of non-pinball material that you have? My In my collection? Yeah. Uh, probably my NES TV. Nice. Sharp. That sharp one. Out of B. Yeah, that's cool. Where did you pick I've that got, up? I've actually got I've got two Rob Deluxe sets right now, two box Rob sets. I'll uh, buy one off you. One of those can go away. Yep, right here. Um, we could talk about that. You know, down with that. I'll, I'll make trade you like ten right. kilograms right. of poutine. Ooh, and fifteen Ooh. copies of Connect Adventures for the three hundred and sixty. <laughs> for you. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I would have to say the Sharp TV. I wanted one of those since I was a kid. We went to, The first time I ever went to Disney World as a kid, we stayed in a hotel that had one. And had I known that we were staying there, I would have brought video games and never gone to Disney World. I would just play <laughs> But we didn't get to play it. I just knew that it could play video games. And yeah. I was like, that's amazing. And I always wanted one. So I got one. I found one. I paid $200 for one. Uh, and I didn't that's, haggle. I didn't buy it. I would do I that today or right now. Yeah, I that's the deal. I got a deal on it, and it's got all four feet and the doors, and nice. I have one controller Delicious. for it. That's that's so, wicked. I'm that's a fan awesome. of it. That's not going anywhere. See, that's one of those things that there's a big difference between Canadians and Americans. We did not get that much stuff. America was always the test market for all these things. So there's right. so many things that we we don't get up here that you guys had down there, which well, makes or you finding... might have only got in like Toronto because it's right there. Yeah, you know something like that. It only crosses over a certain amount. Exactly, because literally where we are, 
our our biggest city in our province or state equivalent is what is there almost a million people in Winnipeg not even uh, no 600,000 something like that yeah uh, in, in that range yeah, right yeah. so that's our capital city at 600,000 we're in the third largest city in our province at about 13,000 people which is nothing you know, Manitoba is not a good example it's, of it's a terrible, terrible. example so we do not get stuff like a sharp TV I would be I bet you there's a couple in the province but there's not that many here so finding anything like that is tough. I've been, like I said, I've been collecting 13 to 15 years. I finally found my first power glove about two months ago. Oh man! And it happened to be in the box too, with the manuals and everything. So I was very excited about that. Nice. It's a piece of shit, but nice to find. Oh find yeah, it. but it's cool to have, right? <laughs> it just looks cool to have. Yeah. yeah. I've seen three or four of those in the last year alone. Like we, I see a good bit of those. I see, I see power pads practically every day. Yeah. There's a power pad everywhere I go. Yeah, we got a lot of power pads. It took me forever to finally sell one here. Did you you had a power pad here? Yeah, and we got another one that's that what's that NES uh, the bundle with the power pad, the power set? Is that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, we have the one of those now. Yeah, and not the challenge set is the original one. Okay, yeah. The power set or the Was it the power set? <laughs> yeah, it's the power set. I can see it from here. Yeah, okay. Power set. For sure. Uh, yeah. Anyway, what are we doing? We're winding down. Winding down. Are we sure? Any more questions for him? Somebody asked me what my favorite game was. I, there's no choice. That I don't have a favorite game. That's love... so hard. You, you can't. Yeah, that's tough. Like you can you can give a list of games you love, but to say your all time favorite's always tough. Well, it's easy. Right. It's Call of Duty World War Two. Grand Theft Auto Five. I like. That. I'll go yeah. back. I go back to the game Freak Style probably more than any other game, but I don't think it's my favorite game. But yeah. If you ever heard of it, it's like a motocross racing game, and it's just relaxing to me. So I play it, you know what I mean? But it's not my favorite game. The problem is there's too many genres and, and too many different yeah. styles of games. Like, like you you can love Skyrim because of how expansive and huge the damn game is. But you can also love, like, The Sims because it's The Sims and it's a life simulator. Like, it, you, it's such a hard thing to narrow down. I still love Ski Free on, what was it, Windows 95? 98? That's a good one. That was a good like, game. Dude, I didn't solitaire. know you could press the F button to go super fast. And I would solitaire, just play until that you know, monster killed me. Solitaire on a computer is fun. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, there's great... I, Tetris. I love Tetris. But it ain't your favorite game. It's not my favorite. They're all my favorite. They're, games are my favorite. I mean, Pio Pio Tetris is better than regular Tetris. That's It's pretty good. It's better. How do you pronounce it? Pio Pio. Okay, because I've been saying Puyo Puyo. That's how that, I would say it. That makes sense, too. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't bitch over the pronunciation. But I don't know. I, I'm. I say Ninja Gaiden. Oh you know? no! No. Whoa. Like Gaiden. There's that deep south we've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you got that Ninja Gaiden? Yeah. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> I can really turn it on if I want to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, I got ladies. Cousins, I got cousins that talk like this. <laughs> I bet you do. That's the sad I thing. Like, that's got to be tough. I mean, it doesn't make me sad. I love my cousins, but they do. I got some deep South relatives, brother. <laughs> One of the reps who calls uh, the restaurant I work at to do like our orders, they they half the time they have, like our, the Pepsi rep. They have like a deep Texas accent, and it's always it's a joy to listen to them on the phone. Nice, that <laughs> deep Southern. We all right, all here. right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. This has wow. been first. <laughs> wow, wow. This has been hey, first. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you all for having me, guys. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Captain Richard, thank you for uh, joining us on the show, being our first guest. That's a that's a, that's a big occasion for all of us. Very proud. I uh, hope, hopefully I can, you know, I can deal with the pressure. Of course. The that. most successful podcast in all of southeastern Manitoba. That's what we say. <laughs> that's our cat. That's our uh, that's our selling point. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you guys, again, have not subscribed to Captain Retro yet, be sure to check out his channel. If you Absolutely. Love, love things retro. He's he's even more in depth on the stuff than we are and he's got a lot of cool shit that he's collected over the years to check out and again if you're into like arcade restoration stuff he's got the Captain Retro show totally worth your time again it's in the chat if you want to subscribe to him by all means do it we will be live again next week um not next week no, next week's Christmas we'll probably take a break on that Christmas day yeah so two weeks from now we'll be two in the new year now. the first episode of the new year we will be back yes we will anyway yeah I hope we, uh, hope we keep in touch with you Kevin thank you again for being on the show Dude, thank you guys again. Awesome. Good times. Excellent. And then have a good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And use Captain Retro's intro one more time because it's, it's cool as balls. <laughs> when you want to go, no. when you want to go, what's going down, you can die. He's the worst.